I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. Um, many of you know that I am also a Sacred Money Archetypes coach um, and that I bring a lot of money mindset work into my organizing business because I feel like our relationship with money is very reflective of the relationship we have with our stuff and the relationship we have with people and the relationship we have with ideas and, and all kinds of things. And so how we do money is actually a bit of how we do everything. And by using the sacred money archetypes as a way to kind of shorthand some communication about our things, our feelings and our actions, it can help us make more efforts uh, or get better results in less time as a result of our efforts because we're concentrating on the things that we can work with easily versus the things we have to fight against um, that make things more difficult. So for those of you that don't know about um, archetypes and archetypal work, it is really a, a set of symbolic metaphors that allow us to comprehend what those actions and behaviors might be. It helps our recognize patterns in our behavior and ways areas for improvement or for enhancement. Um, sorry, improvement and enhancement are actually the same thing. I'm not sure why I went redundant with that. Um, but helping uh, ourselves become aware of those patterns of behavior helps us figure out where to as I said earlier, uh, focus our energies. So because it's the holiday season, I wanted to start with one of the archetypes. I'm gonna do a series of these um, during Facebook. So uh, I'm gonna tell a little bit about each of the different archetypes as we go. And this is a card that when I do a reading for people, you get a set of the cards and um, they're all about what the archetype is. This is crazy. Uh, I don't know how many of you do lives, but it's always backwards. So I go to move the card the right way and it's the wrong way. Um, so what it is is a series of uh, insights and exercises and explanations about working with your archetype so that you can um, improve and, and, and use it more easily. And um, yeah, it helps make decisions, I find, is the best part. Um, but I want to see if, if any of these resonate with you. It might mean you're a, a nurturer. So your natural generosity includes wanting to protect, shelter, and nurture others, including financially. Um, you're likely motivated to give generously and help others. And unfortunately, sometimes that's at sacrifice to yourself, which is part of what we're going to be talking about today, how to actually em empower yourself. And for so many of my clients, it becomes difficult to ask for what you're worth. So I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and learning how to charge properly and um, not feel resentful about how much your clients are paying you um, is a key uh, aspect of, of working with your nurturer archetype. Um, the best parts about being a nurturer are, you know, the strengths. You are such strong people. Um, you're giving, reliable, and devoted to those that you um, are close to and love and want to help. And so that makes you a super great person to know on all kinds of ways. And it can show up in gifts. It can show up in money. It can show up in making food for people. It can show up in just, you know, checking in with your people on a regular basis. So know that being a nurturer is fantastic. And one of the reasons it can be tricky is because you do that as a, um, it's mo more important for you to help people than to make money or to take care of yourself. And so at some point, it's important to figure out how to care for others while empowering yourself, because that's where the power, the true power of the nurturing archetype comes into play. How you help people can become just as important as the fact that you are helping people. And that's where you can connect with your audience if you're a service business. Um, it is where you can connect on a deeper level with your family and loved ones because you're helping them empower themselves while demonstrating that you empower yourself. Um, so think about it. When you feel depleted 
Is it because you gave and gave and gave and gave and no one noticed? Um, no one did something nice in return for you? All those little things that can cause resentment um, around your giving and generosity, it's the challenge, right? It's you need to rescue isn't necessarily helpful to the person you're trying to rescue in that moment or the way you're trying to rescue uh, may not be uh, as appreciated as if um, you were you were just trying to listen and, and talk to the person and, and be an ear to listen to. So um, be an ear to listen to through be the ear to listen through. Um, you know, this can be something as simple as uh, my mom has this tendency to say, would you like something to drink? And you say yes or no. And then she gives you 12 choices of what that might be, regardless of whether you said yes or no. And then um, you say, I'll get it in a minute, mom. And she says, well, you know, I because I can just get it for you real quick right now. And you haven't even decided if you are thirsty yet. And she's running through the list of 12 more things again. And it feels like a lot of pressure instead of the help it's trying to be to provide you something nurturing and, and hydrating <laughs> while you visit. Um, and so just notice that where is it showing up? Is it always giving money to that person that never quite figures out what to do with the money? And so you have to give and give and give. Um, is it to the point where you're abandoning yourself to help the other person. So um, I've, I find this a lot with my um, mom clients. You know, they, they do everything for the kids and then the kids aren't learning how to do it and the mom is very drained and depleted and unappreciated. So there's where that, learning that boundary. Where do you put the boundary to be very generous and empowering of yourself and others and where do you say, enough, I'm done with that for now. Um, so we want to notice there's these challenges with each of the archetypes and for the nurturer it just happens to be that tendency to feel resentful or over giving and then depleted and then wondering why. So as this holiday season comes upon us, I want you to be really clear on nurturing doesn't have to be about money. It doesn't have to be giving more gifts. It doesn't have to be um, writing more checks. It doesn't have to be doing any of those things. It might be taking care of yourself enough to show up as your best self to all the events you have to go go to. It might show up as investing in yourself so that you can provide more next year for the people in your life. But you need to take the time to decide how you're going to nurture. And that's where that boundary is going to come in. You set that boundary and then don't cross it. Honor yourself and empower yourself by you know, creating those clear money boundaries so that you are being powerful and you are empowering others as well. And you might be still wondering what this has to do with clutter. Well, when you're depleted, things pile up because you're not taking care of things and that leads to clutter. If you are so generous that you always have things on hand to give to other people in case they need it, you might have some clutter. If you, um, are always buying the thing to help the person out, you are accumulating clutter. And if you're trying to help yourself out, the decisions you're making on how to help yourself are getting depleted as well. And the value of those decisions is probably going down a little bit because you're not making them from a place of empowerment, but from a place of depletion. So I hope this was interesting to you. If you are at all interested in finding more about the archetypes, and by the way, we are all a combination of three archetypes, like a three-legged stool. So one can balance the others out. And I'm just gonna be describing some of the characteristics, um, strengths and challenges of the various archetypes over the next um, few Facebook Lives, just so we can get um, start getting familiar with it. And if you're ready to jump right in, let me know. I will answer questions in the comments and or send you links to sign up for a reading um, and, and an assessment tool. And um, anyway, I hope it leads to some great conversations about clutter and money beliefs and how we can all empower each other to be better versions of ourselves across the board. 
anyway, happy holiday. Um, I will be here again next Monday and we'll talk a little bit more about clutter and archetypes from a different perspective. And I will be going through all eight of the archetypes over the next few weeks. All right, take care.